Hi there! I'm here today with a tortoise that you already know. This tortoise is Houdini, and some of you noticed that on our first video, the first video we ever made, the top five reptiles for beginners, there were no turtles or tortoises on that video. If you haven't seen it before, you should check it out. It's right there. But if you have seen it, you might be wondering why no turtles, because turtles do make amazing pets. And the truth is, I personally don't think that turtles are the best bet for a brand new beginner reptile keeper, but that doesn't mean they're not fantastic, and it doesn't mean I don't recommend them. The only reason I don't think they're ideal for a brand new reptile keeper is just because, compared to the reptiles that we did recommend for beginners, turtles are a little bit more of a commitment. Um, Primarily in the fact that they live a very, very long time. Most of the reptiles that we've recommended so far should live somewhere between 10 up to maybe about 30 years. Turtles live much, much longer than that. Not all of them, but many of them live way longer than that. And so they're a big deal. But if you know that a turtle is something that you want, and you're ready for it, you know reptiles are something you're going to be committed to for the next few decades, maybe for the rest of your life, then a turtle might be just perfect for you. If you've already seen our video on the difference between turtles and tortoises, which you can actually watch right there, then you already know that tortoises are a type of turtle. So right now we're going to talk about five of the best pet turtles, and you better believe that there are going to be some tortoises on that list, including our buddy here Houdini. Houdini is a Russian tortoise. And the Russian tortoise is the first contender on our list. And I want to talk about the pros and cons of Houdini, the Russian tortoise. And for beginners, the Russian tortoise is wonderful because of its size. It is like all of the fun of a bigger tortoise, but in a very, very reasonable little package. And I love that about Russian tortoises. They are so reasonably sized and fun, yet they look and act just like great big tortoises. They're also, because they're small primarily, easy to feed. When you get a huge tortoise, you're going to need to get a lot of food for it. When you have a tortoise that is this size, it does not eat nearly as much as a great big old tortoise. And that's a great thing because produce, as it turns out, is expensive. And tortoises are going to be primarily vegetarians, so their diet actually can be pretty expensive. But not if they're this size. Wonderful. Also, because they're small, they're very easy to house, and I love that about them. They, they don't need a big old huge enclosure because they're not big old huge turtles. And the other thing that's wonderful about Russian tortoises is that they're easy to find. You can actually find them in most pet shops, and that's a great thing if you're looking for one as a pet. They're not perfect, though. There are some cons, and one of those cons is that they're very difficult to find captive bred. This is often the case when you have something that is frequently brought over wild-caught. When things are wild-caught on a regular basis, it means they come over here in droves and they're very inexpensive. And so nobody wants to put in the time and effort that it takes to breed them if you could just go down the street and buy one for $50 because they would need to sell it to you captive bred for a whole lot more than that. But I think it's worth it. And we've already done a video, in fact, you've probably seen it, about why captive bred pet reptiles are a better choice than wild-caught. And the same is true for Russian tortoises, and if you're willing to look, you can find one that's been captive bred instead of wild caught. But it's harder, and that's a con. They don't understand barriers very well. So if you try to keep a tortoise, like a Russian tortoise, in, say, a glass enclosure, it doesn't seem to recognize that it can't go through that glass, and it will spend all day just going bang, 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 until you lose your mind. So you have to keep that in mind when picking out a tortoise. But if you don't mind those little cons, if those pros are the kind of pros you're looking for, the Russian tortoise might be the greatest pet turtle there is. Our next contender that could be the greatest pet turtle on planet Earth are mud, musk, and stink pot turtles. These are all very closely related to one another. And they are totally rad turtles that a lot of people have never seen, never heard of. And honestly, this one is not changing that very much because I could have a rock in my hand, you wouldn't know the difference. But when they are in their enclosure, instead of 
in my hand. They're going to act very, very differently, and they're awesome, awesome pet turtles. I want to talk about some of the pros, and one of the huge pros is actually that they're not huge. Mud and musk turtles, generally speaking, stay very, very small. In fact, this is a, one of the larger species of mud and musk turtles. Some of them stay very, very tiny for life. Some get a little bit bigger than this, but they're little turtles. And that is a wonderful thing, especially with an aquatic turtle like this, because aquatic turtles, they're very active, they're very fun. These are some of the pros about them, is that they are so enjoyable to watch because they're swimming around, they're interacting with their environment, they'll interact with you when they see you come into the room, they'll beg you for food. They are just incredible. They'll eat right out of your hand. You gotta be careful with that because mud and musk turtles can bite pretty hard. So if you watch out for that though, they are just a blast to interact with and to watch, but when you're an aquatic turtle and they're that active, if it's big, it's going to need an absolutely enormous enclosure. But mud and musk turtles, because they stay small, it's still a big enclosure, but it is not enormous. It's very reasonable, something you could actually have in your home. And I love mud and musk turtles for that reason. Also, they're just a little bit unusual. There aren't that many people who've seen mud and musk turtles. Lots of people have seen turtles, especially like red-eared sliders, probably dozens of times in their life. But many people have never seen a mud or musk turtle, and that just makes it fun. And I love the look of them. Honestly, their face looks a lot like a snapping turtle, but whereas snapping turtles get to be about 75 pounds, this is a full-grown musk turtle. Good news. They do have some cons, and you know the biggest con to them is just that they are a water turtle. And water turtles across the board are going to be a little bit more difficult because they need a big enclosure that can hold water. And that means they're going to need some sort of a filtration device. It means they're going to need some sort of a tank heater. It means they're going to need regular water changes. Generally speaking, they're going to need also to have a, a basking area and a lamp. All of these are going to need lamps, but you need this on top of all kinds of other stuff when it's a water turtle because you need an aquatic environment and a terrestrial environment in the same enclosure. And that's a bit of a pain. Another problem with them is that they're small. Now, I told you before that them being small is a pro and it's totally awesome. But the difficult thing is in some places there are laws regarding the size of turtle that you are allowed to sell. Turtles that stay small their whole lives may never get to a size where they're legal to sell. There are loopholes. And so you can get one if you want one, but it makes it a little bit more difficult in some places to find one. The last con is just that because they are a little bit less common than things like a red-eared slider, they're just going to be harder to find. But they're worth it. They're worth it. They're just so fantastic. Mud musk and stink pot turtles, amazing. Could be one of the greatest pet reptiles, pet turtles at least, on planet Earth. Next on our list of five of the greatest pet turtles you could ever own is the sulcata tortoise. The sulcata tortoise has so many great pros, but one of them is their truly impressive size. This tortoise here is, is my sulcata tortoise. He's currently about 40 pounds. They can get more than twice this big. That is a big tortoise. They're the third largest tortoise in the world. If you want a big tortoise, these guys are just unbelievably amazing. And they're huge! And they only get bigger than this! They're also very easy to feed. Uh, I took in my Sulcata tortoise as a rescue, and I wasn't excited about having a giant tortoise because I had a smaller tortoise and I knew what that cost me to feed and I was thinking there's no way I'm going to be able to have a tortoise this big. But, but I agreed to watch it over a weekend and I started doing my homework and I found out that these guys, being from the deserts of northern Africa, are primarily grass eaters. And so, though I do buy some produce for him, the main thing that he eats is grass. And so, some, having something like a bale of hay, which is very, very affordable, is his staple diet. And that is amazing. That's amazing. So they're very easy to feed for something this large. And they're also very easy to find. So Akata tortoises have been bred in this country for a long time and they're widely, widely available. But I want to talk about that a little bit because I am a little bit reluctant to recommend the Sulcata tortoise because quite frankly, lots of people get them 
who aren't prepared for a tortoise this size. They get them like when they're the size of a softball or something, or maybe even smaller, and they that's all they're prepared for. And they don't get that this is what they're gonna have eventually, and even bigger than this. And so a lot of the tortoises end up getting neglected or poorly housed, and they need rescuing. And so if a sulcata tortoise is right for you, what I would like to ask you to do is to rescue one. If you want a sulcata tortoise, it's because you want a giant tortoise. If you want a little tortoise, get a little tortoise. If you want a giant tortoise, get one that's already a giant and needs a good home. And they're quite available in this way, if you're willing to look. When it comes to cons, we've kind of already talked about this a little bit. I told you their impressive size was a pro. It's also a con because they're difficult to house. When I committed myself to taking on this Sulcata tortoise, I committed myself to building an enormous enclosure in my basement and also letting him run around outside in my yard as often as possible. That's what I committed myself to. Not everybody's ready for that. Not everybody has space for that. And so if you don't, a Sulcata tortoise is not for you. Also, something you'll notice on him is they, they're prone to pyramiding. And this is actually not too bad, but that's where the shell pyramids on all the scoots. And there are a number of causes that can lead to this, but it's, it's due to imperfect husbandry. And actually it can be relatively difficult to avoid. His, his case, like I said, is not one of the worst I've seen. I've seen some with giant pyramids. I've even seen, seen some where all the scoots on their back are still very, very small, even though the tortoise is enormous. So if you don't give them proper care, they can develop all wrong. The last con, like I mentioned, is that they're frequently neglected, that people don't take good care of them. And that's why I'm asking you, if you think a sulcata tortoise is right for you, rescue one. Don't buy a baby. There are plenty of people who already buy the babies, and five, ten years down the road, they're going to need you to rescue their tortoise. Please rescue one. But if you're ready for a giant tortoise, if you have the space, the time, and, the, and you're committed to a serious turtle, these are seriously amazing. Next on our list is the box turtle. And box turtles could easily be the greatest pet turtle on earth. For starters, box turtles are fairly easy to find. You can get one almost anywhere and that's a great thing. They also are fairly easy to house because they're not super large turtles. They are somewhat active, but they're mostly just gonna be on land, which is great means you don't need a huge aquatic area and a huge land area, just a land area and a water bowl that they can get a drink in every now and then. They're also very easy to feed, which is a huge pro. In fact, they're easier to feed than anything else we've talked about, probably, because they're omnivores. And as such, they eat lots of different things. They'll, they'll eat some vegetation, but they'll also eat things like insects and meat. They're also very affordable. And you can usually pick up a, a box turtle for under a hundred dollars and that's pretty great because some turtles can cost you a whole lot more than that. So box turtles have got a lot of pros. The only downside to box turtles is that it's really difficult to find a captive bred baby. Most of the time the ones that you'll be buying are going to be wild caught and like what we talked about with Russian tortoises, when wild caught ones are widely available, very few people breed them because they would have to sell them for more than you can buy a wild caught adult for. And as a result they're very rare. But they're worth it. Find a captive bred baby. Captive bred baby box turtles, baby box turtles in general, are one of the most adorable things you'll ever see, and you've probably never seen one, and what an amazing experience it would be to raise one up from a baby. Amazing. Love box turtles. The last turtle on our list is the diamondback terrapin, which is honestly a turtle I have adored ever since I first discovered they existed when I was a little kid. My favorite book growing up was my field guide to North American reptiles and amphibians. I, I imagine you've all had this experience. And I saw this turtle with black and white spotted skin. And I thought, I have never seen a turtle that looks anywhere close to that. That is amazing. And then I went most of my life without having ever seen one in person. And the first time that I got to see one, it was so exciting. I love Diamondback Terrapins. I have not been disappointed at all by what an amazing turtle this is. Lots of pros, right? Obviously lots of pros, but a huge pro is that they are beautiful. 
What a gorgeous turtle! Arguably the most beautiful turtle in the world, if you ask me. Though, there are some other ridiculously beautiful turtles out there. They're also a very modest size. This again is a water turtle. They've got the cons of being water turtles, but compared to things like red-eared sliders, they're very much smaller. And that is a huge, huge pro in my opinion, because a big water turtle needs an absolutely enormous enclosure or a pond, and a smaller water turtle can be more reasonably kept. They're also, like other water turtles, very interactive, fun. They see you come into the room, they're gonna be right up against the side asking you for food. You can feed them right, right out of your hand. Though be careful because they do have a pretty sharp little beak there. Absolutely incredible water turtles. One, one little con, well, there are a few cons actually. The biggest one is that they are a water turtle. And also this might be a con, which is that in the wild, where you generally find them are in brackish waters, which is kind of like fresh water, but it's got some salt in it. So a lot of places will recommend that you keep them in brackish water. Though, if they're raised all their life in fresh water, it seems like they do pretty well in fresh water, but having the water be somewhat brackish would probably be best for them, and that's a little bit different from what you will find with most other aquatic turtles. They also can be very difficult to find. Like I said, I loved them my whole life, but I didn't see one in person until like 20 years later. Because, depending on where you live, they might not even be legal. Uh, some states have banned them, and so you're not allowed to own or buy them or move them into certain states. And so you may not be able to get one at all. But if you live in a state where you can get one, they are available. You can get them captive bred. In fact, we got this one from Great Basin Serpentarium. Uh, they actually helped us out with a few of the turtles today. They've helped us out with other animals in the past. And they produce diamondback terrapins. And so you can get a captive bred diamondback terrapin. In fact, you'd probably have a hard time getting a legal wild caught one, you wouldn't want one anyway. They are available, but it's going to be difficult to find one. So be prepared to look online and maybe to look for a while. But once you find one, there may not be a cooler turtle than this. There may not be a better pet turtle than this. The Diamondback Terrapin rounds out our list of five of the best pet turtles you could ever own. I recommend all of these highly if you decide that they're right for you. If you've looked at the pros and cons, if you've in investigated and researched the care of them, and it's right for you, these are tough to beat. As always, like and subscribe so you can be notified when the videos come out about each and every one of these amazing turtles, and so that you can follow all of our videos going forward. And we hope to see you real soon. How's everybody doing? Quiet on the set! <laughs> <laughs> Hi there. That was too <laughs> subdued. <laughs> yeah. I'm tranquil today. Its feet look like creepy rock <laughs> feet. Like, look how they're like, well, they're like.